Light that spark fire nation. A JLD here and welcome to episode 1745 of EO Fire, where I chat with today's most inspiring entrepreneurs seven days a week. And today's guest is none other than JP Sears. JP, quick question. Are you prepared to ignite? JLD, I I am definitely prepared to ignite, especially <laughs> because this is episode one thousand seven hundred forty-five. This is special, brother. <laughs> you are an emotional healing coach. He's also Fire Nation, a YouTuber, international teacher, speaker at events, curious student of life, and the author of How to Be Ultra Spiritual: Twelve and a Half Steps to Spiritual Superiority. His ultra-spiritual comedy videos have accumulated over 100 million views, and guess what? I'm probably about 10,500 of those, and <laughs> I love every single one of them. I mean, Fire Nation, if you haven't watched these videos, you are literally not wasting enough of your time. So get into YouTube, <laughs> watch these videos. I was telling JP before we even cranked off that I listened to a recent episode he did with Ben Greedfield at Ben Greedfield Fitness. I was on my run, which I've never not finished. I had to stop w- running and walk because I was doubled over laughing so hard. JP, you're hysterical, my friend. Give us a little breakdown um, of what you have going on in your world and a glimpse of your personal life before we crank into the show. Sure. You know, my my personal life, and by the way, thank you for, for only sharing with everybody like the good things about me. <laughs> I mean, you made me sound like a functional person. Like, functional. yes, thank you for not sharing all the gory shadow sides of my life. <laughs> so yeah, you know, in my life, uh, you know, my, my relationship with my beautiful lady, Amber, that is, that's become a priority for me. And I find that actually ironically helps my business, which is just weird. Like I've never prioritized a relationship. <laughs> Relationship, but somehow I just get more of me through it. So that translates well for my business. And, and elsewhere in my personal life, honestly, I work a lot. And, and I don't really know where work uh, starts and play stops. And I, I, I'm glad it's that way because I would dare say I'm very blessed to earn a living doing what I love, which principally is connecting and creating. Uh, connecting with people and creating. So yeah, I feel very blessed. And then also a uh, last thing in my personal life, because man, I'm sort of boring. Uh, you know, <laughs> my, my health and fitness is very important to me. So I'm, I'm biohacking all the time. I'm always doing things to help sharpen my mind, connect me with my emotions, as well as get my body and peak fitness. Oh, well, I can just say, I love JP, how you just kind of bring this relaxed, but fun and, you know, just kind of self-deprecating humor to the world that we live in because, you know, you're very successful. You work really hard. You know, you have a great relationship. You're good with fitness and nutrition. I was evidence on the Ben Greenfield Fitness Show. I mean, you know what you're talking about. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why I start every one of my shows with, are you prepared to ignite? Because, you know, I want to let my guests know that, hey, let's not take ourselves too seriously. Let's have some fun here. Let's bring some energy. We're not NPR here, like trying to like... (laughs) you know, zone our way out through the news or something. This is just a couple guys having fun. And JP, you've been able to become very successful doing what you love and doing what you're great at. So bring us, Fire Nation, um, a little knowledge on what your area of expertise is, because I'm kind of curious about what you think that is. I would say two things, uh, and I mentioned them you know, 30 seconds ago connecting with people and creating. And the particularly the genre of creation is I share my perspectives through the language of humor. So principally through uh, YouTube videos, Facebook videos, and live performances. And I, I find that, call it area of expertise, where I share perspectives through the language of humor. It really helps people consider concepts and consider realities that they uh, otherwise have never thought of and otherwise wouldn't be willing to entertain. And if, if I just came at people and said, please consider this and just like the serious tone of voice, because you know, we're all humans. We have psychological defense mechanisms. We're all afraid of change, even though we crave change. So when I find, you know, I've been shocked and just amazed, but pleased to find 
when I can share a perspective through comedy, you know, my comedy videos always have a deeper underlying message totally. in, my, in my delusional opinion. I have to think I'm deep. <laughs> no, they are. I'm so deep and eccentric. So <laughs> when I embed an underlying message, it, it it goes in through comedy where people cannot be brainwashed by it, but consider it because it gets into their mind and psyches without it being defended against. And I, and I liken it to when my dog needs medicine, you know, if I just give him the pill, he's going to spit it out. He's just offended totally. against it. But if I wrap the, the pill in a piece of meat, uh, sorry, vegans, or a piece of cheese, <laughs> It allows my dog to take the medicine in. And I think comedy is a beautiful, enticing, playful uh, energy that we can use so we can connect with people at deeper levels. And also, what I've found, and I'm probably way off track of the question, but I don't even care. This <laughs> no big deal. You know, the, the uh, language of humor, it, not only, you know, expressing it in creative ways to share perspectives in creative ways, but man, is it a language of connection. I mean, it doesn't matter how foreign someone is, how much they're from the other side of the world, how much we don't speak their language. When they laugh and we laugh, we understand each other. Like it, someone can just speak whatever language the polar bears speak in at uh, the North Pole. <laughs> But when they laugh, we understand where they're at. So I think capitalizing on using comedy to connect with people, to ultimately help people raise their awareness in life is an area of expertise that I've stumbled my way into. It's so true. And I actually used you as an example here last weekend. We were throwing this event called Puerto Palooza just for six people. So it was like a very intimate mastermind. And one of the people, his name is Tom. He's in the insurance agency and he's has so many complaints about insurance agents and the and how bureaucratic it is and all the negatives. And he was just like, I want to like just create this show where I'm just like basically telling everybody why they're so wrong and how they're, you know, so stupid and silly and stuff. <laughs> And he goes, but at the same time, I know when I do that, I'm just going to make them so defensive and, yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And I go, bro, pause right now. We're going to pop on this video. We're going to go to YouTube. I'm typing in JP Sears and I play like four of your videos for him. And then by the end of that, this light bulb went off and he's like, oh my God, like if I actually approach it like that and with yeah. that kind of parody, like I'm doing like what you're talking about with the dog where I'm wrapping this medicine around with you yeah. know, a piece of meat or with cheese and Fire Nation, there's just other ways to do things that are actually going to get you to that success level. And JP, hundreds of millions of views, you've reached the success level and you're continuing to strive for more. But I don't always just like to to talk about the great stuff and how amazing you are. I like to talk about the dark times too because that's the entrepreneurial journey. So what is one of your worst entrepreneurial moments? In fact, scratch that. What is your worst entrepreneurial moment? Yeah. Tell us that story. Well, you know, being perfect, life is really hard because it's, it's challenging to relate <laughs> to people. Uh, so – Boy, do I have a tough. Honestly, the <laughs> I love the question. The worst entrepreneurial moment I've had, I, I believe I was 23. And I was teaching. It was, uh, it was my second workshop. Uh, so, you know, public speaking. And I just froze up really? in front of the room. I mean, it was my IQ went from like whatever it is now to zero just completely paralyzed. I didn't know what to say. And, you know, I got this horrible feeling of like that red tingling yeah. feeling in my face and just this dread of, holy cow, I'm supposed to go for another two hours. <laughs> this is living hell. It's never going to end. I'm humiliated. So that that was a, a really uh, uncomfortable experience. And not to sound cliche, it was also a amazing learning experience. And one of, one of the things I learned from that experience was connect to the audience, JP. So, you know, I was, what made me freeze? I tried to get in my head and start thinking, okay, what did I plan out to say? Mm. 
And so like I was leaving the room in my mind, trying to go back to my notes. And, you know, I didn't want to have notes in front of me because I wanted to look more on my game. And, but so my notes in my head. So I was completely disconnected from the audience. And luckily, I had this horribly uncomfortable experience because it really helped teach me connect with the audience. And since then, I mean, I, I've had the chance of spending, uh, I don't know how many thousands of hours in front of live audiences. And it is so important to me. And I think it, it, it makes, helps me make as much of an impact as I can when I am connecting with the audience that is there in front of me, not being a robot running some premeditated script where I'm, I might as well not even be in the room because I'm not using my human faculties. I'm just reciting. No, it's a right. connection, a communion with the audience. And, you know, thank you, dear 22, 23 year old JP who went through that hellish experience because it taught me a wonderful lesson that really works for me present day. Well, I can tell you a lot of people in Fire Nation resonate with that because our listeners are entrepreneurs, small business owners, and getting out in front of people and speaking is a huge part of what we do. And, you know, they say the number one phobia in the world is public speaking with death being number two. And, you know, that stale, stale joke of people would rather be in the casket than actually giving the eulogy at a funeral yeah, probably yeah. has some truth to it. But my question for you, JP, is... Just one, like what's one of the things that you found as a great way to connect with an audience when you first get up on stage? What I find works for me, this is a little idiosyncrasy that gives me a lot of bang for my buck. I will make a little quirky comment about someone or something happening in the audience right here, right now. So it's impromptu. Um, I, an example comes to my mind. I was recently uh, doing a hour presentation at a convention, and there's this guy in the front row with this like big beard, like it was awesome. <laughs> so one of the first things I do is like I, I thanked his beard for being here, and you know it, it brought a little bit of little bit of levity through laughter, but more importantly, it created a connection with me and the audience because like that was. That was me taking the audience's hand and saying, I'm here with you as you are now. So finding a little idiosyncrasy happening with the audience uh, or a member of the audience and acknowledging it, making a little joke or acknowledging it, I think really goes a long way. Yeah, I love that. I can picture that and the audience kind of like turning and looking and seeing what you're talking about and just having that kind of chuckle together. And like you said, you know, earlier with laughter, I mean, when we as humans share laughter, I mean, talk about breaking the ice. I mean, that's the universal language that we have. And JP, that of course, is an aha moment, like understanding at 23 years old, you have to connect with an audience. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's brilliance. You've had a lot of those great ideas over the years. And you've had some really crappy ideas too. But what I want to hear next is a story of what you consider one of your greatest ideas to date. Tell us that story. Yeah, you know, it would simply be making comedy videos. So for the first 13 years of my career, I my career being doing emotional healing work, teaching emotional healing workshops, self-empowerment classes where – you know, the, I, I'm supposed to be serious. Yeah. I'm supposed to act like Eckhart Tolle and <laughs> you know, be informative, but really boring because that'll increase my credibility. So that's a big story I told myself, which also meant to me it would be a terrible idea if I let my se my natural sense of humor come out professionally. So for 13 years, I told myself that story, and worse yet, I believed that story. So. Well, eventually, I just couldn't betray myself any longer. So I decided, well, okay, let me let me make this one comedy video because this idea, it's just burning away at me. I got to do it. I still think it'll be bad for business, but I'm going to do it. And then I released the video, even though I'm like, well, this is going to be bad for business. <laughs> it turned out it was the best thing I ever did uh. for my business. So the aha moment was keep making comedy videos, which also you know translates into a more macro aha, which is be you, JP. Always bet on being yourself. Don't try to be who you think you're supposed to be. Be you and don't apologize for it. I think there is 
significant value when each of us can be ourselves. I think our, our real value is being ourselves. The illusion of value can be, you know, I'm supposed to be this kind of person or like this mentor or play this role. And there might be a little value in that, but there is priceless value when we show up being the unique human being that we are, in my opinion. Yeah. And I love that message. But, you know, one thing I will say is when I first started EO Fire, you know, we're talking five years ago, 1700 plus episodes ago, even though I wanted to be myself behind the microphone, I couldn't. I had no experience. I was bad. Like I was awkward. I was sure. naive. I just, I, I couldn't do anything except, you know, stand with a piece of paper shaking in my hand and like trying to stick to a script. Now, I was able over hundreds and hundreds yeah. of episodes to get there. What have you found has, has been a way that could help people maybe get to their natural, um, just personal self a little bit quicker? Yeah, in my opinion, it is practicing your craft consistently and over the long haul. So, you know, you, part of your craft is podcast, part of my yeah. craft is videos, and each, each entrepreneur out there might have their own variation of the craft. But when we're able to, when we're willing to practice it consistently over the long haul, that acknowledges like, hey, we're we're going to be a normal human being at first, which means we're kind of going to suck at doing something we've never done before. And and once we understand, get comfortable with the terrain, then more of our naturalness can progressively infiltrate in. But I think we make a huge mistake and do ourselves a tremendous disservice when we when we do one podcast. And then we compare ourselves to someone who's done thousands of podcasts. Right. And, well, they're way more natural than <laughs> I am. Well, of course, we've only done one podcast. It, go back to the, you know, and I love, JLD, how you mentioned, you know, your first podcast, 1,745 Horrible. episodes ago, you're there shaking, holding a piece of paper. But he, you did it consistently. So it's just like if we're out riding a bike, if it's your first time riding a bike, you're not going to be able to have your natural personality come out riding the bike because you're juggling too many other balls at the same time. But keep doing what you're doing. And even though you might lose yourself, you'll be unnatural. I think losing ourself is a powerful way to find ourself as long as we're willing to keep practicing consistently at our craft. Yeah, a phrase that I love is every master was a disaster. And look <laughs> at any industry, seriously, I mean, from sports to Hollywood to entrepreneurship, I mean, that's just a reality. And this next thing I'm going to say, Fire Nation, it might be a little confusing at first, so kind of bear with me here, but you have to care about your craft, 100%. Like You have to sure. really care, but at the same time, and this is the confusing part, I'm going to say, you also have to care less. And what I mean by that specifically is what I was so stressed out about JP was like, oh my God, I just said, um, oh my God. Now I'm in my head because I'm like, I said, um, I said, uh, I took a breath. It was really loud. And now I'm in my head and I'm trying to be this perfect person who, who's, who talks like that. Nobody talks like that. So yeah. it was so obvious. So I have always cared deeply about my podcast and my craft and you fire nation and my guests, of course, JP, but I stopped caring about trying to be this like perfect figment of the imagination that I've conjured up that I somehow had to be. And I, I was able to drop that at like episode 300. And I was literally getting emails like, John, like now it's like you, your personality's coming out. And now I meet people like at conferences and they're like, you're just like you sound on the show. And I'm like, well, it's, it's finally me. Like it took 300 episodes, you know, a year, yeah. but I got there. So does that make any sense? Yeah, to me, it makes a lot of sense. And I, man, I, I hadn't heard that saying before, but it's definitely going into my, deep into my heart. Every master used to be a disaster and that rhymes. So we know it's true. <laughs> JP, give me credit twice and then it's yours forever. Okay. That I, I have to, and I'm going to be paying you royalties. On <laughs> just that twice, just sure. two times. Okay. So I want to know today what you're most excited about. Creativity. It feeds my soul. It really does. And, and creativity, that basically what that means for me is sharing a perspective in a non-literal way. So in my non-literal way is through comedy. And it could be symbolically through art. It could be symbolically through a product. So 
I, I have just been shocked how much I feel fulfilled with creativity and that absolutely violates my my programming from a child from childhood as well as the the first I don't know couple decades of my adulthood where you know I I was tr- desperately scratching for a sense of value through productivity you know let me accomplish this much in a day and <laughs> get this many dollars in my bank account it's like yeah uh, that's all cool but it unfortunately doesn't fulfill me deep inside so creativity is weird Be, weird for me because the way i was brought up and t- the way i taught myself how to think is I would give very little value to creativity because it's kind of like a little bit abstract and it's not freaking productive. But it brings significant value at a feeling level inside of me. And oddly enough, for me, uh, it brings more value to my bank account than any kind of just linear productivity route that I've ever tried does. So Man, creativity, it's important to me. And I would dare say uh, all human beings, from my delusional uh, perspective, are creative. It doesn't mean we express it, but I think when we allow ourselves to dip into creative expression, it doesn't have to be your job, though, as entrepreneurs. Honestly, I think the more creative uh, we are, the more people we reach, the more successful we become. but when we can tap into expressing some level of creativity, I do think universally it brings all people a level of enjoyment that we can't get elsewhere. Yeah, it sounds like that word creativity was a big breakthrough for you. And like yeah. I kind of look back in my journey and the word that was huge for me was value. And that's where I was really missing for the first, you know, 32 years of my life before I launched EO Fire. But then for me, it was an Albert Einstein quote that says, you know, don't try to be this person of success, be a person of value first. And just like with you said, when you became creative, you know, that's when your bank account and started to reflect that. And when I started being of value, this free, valuable daily podcast to people, it wasn't overnight. It was 180 episodes, almost 200 days before I saw a dollar come in from that. But, you know, it started building up that value that hit the tipping point down that road. And Fire Nation, if you think JP's been dropping value bombs, don't you go anywhere because we're going to hit the lightning round after we thank our sponsors. If you're a landlord, then you know there are a lot of moving pieces when it comes to keeping your business running smoothly, like making sure your tenants have great credit, that they pay their bills on time, and of course, that they're going to pay you on time. Great news is there's a company that can help. Smart Move will help you find out what you don't know about your rental applicants, and right now you can save 25% off your next tenant screening. Smart Move is accessible from any of your mobile devices. They give you real reports, including credit reports and criminal backgrounds checks and they're all about fast results. Reports are delivered within minutes. If you own a rental property or know someone who does, try Smart Move so you don't find out the hard way that a prospective tenant is a risk. Visit tenantscreening.com, enter code FIRENATION, that's all one word, and get 25% off your next screening. That's tenantscreening.com, code FIRENATION, all one word. With Smart Move, you'll get great reports, great convenience, and great tenants. Preparing for your family's future. It might not be something you've thought about much in the past, and it might not be something you've thought about recently, but it should be. I know it's a big topic, and that's why LegalZoom makes an entire month of it. Right now, it's National Make a Will Month at LegalZoom. So if you're not sure where to start or what preparing for your family's future even looks like, then LegalZoom has you covered with their estate planning kit. LegalZoom's estate planning kit gives you all the tools you need in one place, including resources to help you decide whether a will or a trust is right for you. LegalZoom's not a law firm, but if you have any questions along the way, you can always reach out to their network of attorneys for advice. They're available in all 50 states. Visit LegalZoom.com slash prepare today. There's no obligation, just great resources to help you protect everything you care about during National Make-A-Will Month. That's LegalZoom.com slash prepare. JP, are you ready to rock the lightning rounds? I am, and I would feel awkward if I actually said no, but I definitely am. (laughs) What was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? 
I would say fear of the unknown. You know, when I was in my early 20s and and into my mid 20s, I was trying to latch on to other people. Maybe it's, you know, being, you know, piggybacking off a mentor too long, but, you know, being afraid to stand on my own two legs, really, because the unknown, like what was my entrepreneurial path? I didn't know. And I, you know, as I kind of look back over the path and the terrain that I've covered, I realized like, wow, my path has unfolded in very mysterious ways. I could never have predicted where, where, you know, where I've been and where I'm at now. So the fear of the mystery, the fear of the unknown, and that that was a, a something that really caused me to shuffle my feet slowly. But I think now what works well for me, and I think works well for a lot of other, uh, other entrepreneurs, is when we can say yes to being afraid rather than being afraid to be afraid. You know, we're going to be a normal human being like, oh, I'm afraid. I don't know how this <laughs> is going to work out, but I'm going to move forward anyway. I think that works pretty well for us. Yeah, that phrase, we're all standing upon the shoulders of giants, is true to a level because we do have to learn from those who have come before us as we're making our way. But when are you going to step off that shoulder, Fire Nation, and like step into your creativity, your value, your greatness? And for you, JP, what would you say is the best advice that you've ever received along that journey? You know, the a great friend of mine named Brandon Hawk he gave me just piercing advice that I needed to hear, which was, JP, honor the feelings of your heart, not people's expectations. Ooh, scary advice, because mm. I've built my life being a people pleaser. Let me meet your expectations, even if it means I'm giving myself away. But oh, it was necessary advice. Honor the feelings of your heart, not honoring people's expectations. So you mentioned fitness, you have mentioned nutrition, exercise. What is another personal habit that you think really contributes to your current success? I think starting my day off balanced. And by balanced, uh, I mean, I, I'm stimulating myself physically. I take a 30-minute walk. I take a cold shower. I have uh, uh, coffee. Uh, with a bunch of MCT oil to get my brain chemistry right, <laughs> so that uh, and gratitude in the morning as well. So yes. that that those streamlined habits done in the formative part of my day, I find really set me up to have a great day of a clear mind uh, with intentful focus, and my body has energy to. Uh, do what I need to do throughout the day. It, to me, it's like the early part of our day. It's just kind of like what our childhood is to our adult life. We, we, you know, they call the chi- our childhood the formative years for a reason because it heavily influences how we are as an adult. And I think we can change it, but it takes a lot of conscious intervention. And I think the the morning is the f- that's basically the formative years of our day. What we do in the morning or don't do in the morning can positively or negatively have a big impact on how we are at noon and the evening and nighttime and honestly how our sleep is the next day. It's so true. And, you know, I will say without a doubt, the biggest negative of moving to Puerto Rico, and this is like straight shooting. This isn't trying to be funny. There's no cold showers. Literally, yeah. I turn my water all the way cold and it's the lukewarmest bath water. And I'm just like, I can't take cold showers now. And that was one of the biggest things. I mean, I've hired people, um, not Ben Griefo specifically, but someone just like him. His name's Sean Stevenson, the model health show. Like, to oh, be, yeah. yeah, to be my personal mentor. He was for six months. Like he flew up to my place in San Diego and we set everything up. And one of my morning routines was this cold shower. And I got so in love with it. And then I moved to Puerto Rico and jeez, no more cold showers. You know, uh, an interesting little potential solution. I live in Charleston, South Carolina, and the summers here are so hot where my cold showers are not cold. So I actually got a, a chest style freezer for my back deck, fill it full of water. And each morning, like I'll, I'll, I actually have to break ice off the top. <laughs> so we're talking like this water's, you know, in the 30 yeah. degree or 32 degree range. And just a note of responsibility, I unplug the freezer before I get in it because <laughs> uh, these things aren't made to for not. humans to submerge themselves in ice. But boy, that'll wake you up for sure. Oh, that's epic. Now, if you could recommend one book, JP, of course, to join How to Be Ultra Spiritual on our bookshelves, which Fire Nation Sure. amazing read. What would that book be, JP, and why? 
Yeah, I, I'm going to give a disclaimer. This book is going to sound, oh, this sounds like a religious book, but trust me, it's not. The book is called Conversations with God, book one by Neil Donald Walsh. And, you know, the word God, and it's like, oh, that's got to be too religious or too spiritual. To me, it is a personal empowerment book. And why I recommend it is, at least when I read it, it really helped me align myself to my purpose and take a lot of self-responsibility for my life as essentially the creator of my life. So I just felt so darn empowered reading that book that it's been one of my top recommendations since. JP, I want to end how we started, brother, which is on fire. So give us a parting piece of guidance, the best way that we can connect with you, and then we'll say goodbye. Sure. Well, a parting piece of guidance is probably something I need to hear, thus I'm going to tell it to other people, <laughs> I, so I hope I'm listening. It would be, don't aim for who you think you are. Don't even aim for who you want to be. Aim for the miracle that you actually are. Aim for who you really are, not who you want to be, not who you think you are. I think who we really are is, uh, uh, that's the miracle. That's where the real value and fulfillment comes into our lives. So anyway, I hope I heard that. And, uh, you know, a, a great way to connect with me, all my social media handles are Awaken with JP. So you can find me there and love to connect with y'all. Well, Fire Nation, let me tell you, it's pretty obvious to me JP has been listening to himself for years because he is that person. And you, Fire Nation, are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And two of them, hello, you've been hanging out with JP and JLD today. So keep up the heat and head over to eofire.com. If you type JP in the search bar, his show notes page will pop up with everything that we've been talking about today. Best show notes in the biz, timestamps, links, transcripts, and of course, everything with JP, Awaken with JP. Get over there as well. JP, I want to I want to thank you, brother, for sharing your journey with Fire Nation today. For that, I salute you, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Sounds great, brother. Thank you so much for having me on, and thank you, John, for doing what you do in the world. I think you have a wonderful, valuable offering. Hey, Fire Nation. Hope you enjoyed our chat with JP today. And a productivity, discipline, and focus, those are my three greatest strengths, and they can be yours too. Visit themasteryjournal.com. Master all three skills in 100 days and use promo code podcast for a nice little discount for being a podcast listener. And I will catch you there or I'll catch you on the flip side. Don't find out the hard way that a prospective tenant is a risk. If you own a rental property or know someone who does, try Smart Move. Visit tenantscreening.com, enter code FIRENATION, that's all one word, and get 25% off your next screening. That's tenantscreening.com, code FIRENATION. With Smart Move, you'll get great reports, great convenience, great tenants.